Hi everybody, my name is uh, Nabil Dirham and inshallah I'll be speaking today about a uh, new feature in Visual Studio 2010 and SQL Server 2008 R2 which is called Data Tier Applications. Before I start speaking about Data Tier Applications, uh, how many of you have used uh, database projects? Okay, nice number. So, uh, Data tier application is another way of dealing with databases through your Visual Studio project. This is something that I think everybody you know, will be using in the near future, especially for small to medium-sized projects. Anyway, the problems that we're facing currently is that you know, it's really difficult to control how SQL Server objects are implemented. What I mean is, how do you know who changed what and you know how to deploy your changes afterwards how to deploy your changes to the database controlling this is, has usually been the issue which is between dbas and programmers developers now the thing is imagine this i i need to upload my changes to the database new store procedures new tables and stuff like that uh, what, what, what the DBA or the database administrator asks for is bring me the scripts, right? Yeah. Give me the scripts and I'll run them on my server. The problem with just using scripts is that usually there is, for example, sometimes specific cases, like I need you to run this script first and then this script. Please be sure that you are running a service pack or whatever. Some conditions that you need to communicate with the DB uh, admin so that you can get this uh, information right to the server. Anyway, uh, a, very, a very important issue is that all developers need to work with, with the SQL Server. They need to open SQL Server tools in order to write queries, right? Uh, most developers are not happy with this. Even if you are right now, once you, you know, when you started with this, you felt like, why should I learn this? I just want to do it from Visual Studio. It's enough to just know about Visual Studio and how it works. Uh, from the uh, de deployment uh, perspective, the problem is with the DBA. I, I, I think you all have faced problems with DB admins, right? DB admin is, you know, usually is the guy who doesn't cooperate with everybody. And this is usually true. It's either that he's a bad DB admin, which makes the, the case even worse, because he doesn't communicate well and no work is really done in the uh, correct way. But even if he's a good DB admin, the lack of communication between developers and, and DB admins is a big issue. Because, for example, you, you, you don't see the point in which the DB admin looks for. For example, you have a functionality that you need to run from a store procedure. And for some reason, he's just saying, this is not good. And once you see the code that he thinks is good, you think that this is really bad from a development perspective. This, this gap has always been there between you know, the database and the, the development. Don't ever think that because you know, just select and update and delete, and that's it. There are many things inside SQL Server. So even if you have a good DB admin, still you will have problems communicating with them. And the biggest problem is when you deploy. Sometimes, and this is what happens, a DB admin will just tell you, okay, here's the permissions, just go and do it, right? And he'll just take it back up and tell you, okay, just upload whatever, uh, you know, data or, or changes you have. And here's the big problem. You will face errors eventually. You're using tools or whatever. You mix, you, 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 you know, you mess things up on the live database and then the DB admin has to fix it. And finally, and this is not from, you know, you don't care about this this much, but uh, from the DB admin perspective or the DBA, it's very difficult these days, especially. Do you know what's the average size of the database these days in SQL Server? Anyone have, you know, uh, approximate number? The average size for all companies. I'm talking small to medium to big. For me, it was a little surprise. I, I thought the number would be bigger. But it's two gigabytes. The average is two gigabytes. 
in, in, in companies, you will find that most uh, databases are small. You have you know, in-house applications, right? And the big databases are usually you know, commercial stuff like CRM, AR, uh, you know, ARP, and stuff like that, you know, software that are already provided. So the, the biggest problem for, for DBA is that you have too many databases thrown everywhere. How can you control these in a very effective way? For, for some companies that are managing this well, a DB admin can handle more than 1,000 server. So this, this is really important. And this is becoming more and more important from the DB admin. So you need to analyze servers, to monitor servers. How can data tier application help you? Before, before I start talking about what is data tier application or uh, the concepts behind it, it's a new project. So you will find a new project template in Visual Studio called data tier applications. But actually what's happening is this is not from Visual Studio only. This change has started from SQL Server. So in order to run this, you need both. You need R2, SQL Server 2008 R2. You should download it. And you also need Visual, uh, you know, Visual Studio 2010. So how do we solve the development issue? Simply, because of this new project, you have actually a, T a T SQL inside Visual Studio, in which you can run scripts and get you know execution plan. It's like you're in uh, you know SQL Server. You're running the code inside SQL Server. You can even debug your T SQL, which is in my opinion a very important feature. And uh, there are many other features in which I will show you shortly in a demo. What about deployment? This is this is the biggest you know advantage of using data tier application. The output of this project that you will create is a single file, like a setup file. It's called the DAC pack. By the way, you will find people everywhere referring to data tier applications as DAC instead of DTA, because DTA is already a name in SQL Server. Okay, so just remember, DAC you know, refers to data tier applications. Anyway, so the file that you have from this project is called a DAC pack file. You just Get this file, send it to the DB admin, and the DB admin runs it like a setup. Nothing more. You don't need to run scripts in some order. You can even you know, specify a policy within this file. Like For example, the, the one I'll show you is, I need this to run only on 2008 R2. If somebody is trying to run this on 2008, no, tell him this is not right. So there is a way right now to give what we call the, de the, the developer intent. What do you intend to do with this file? And finally, in 2008 R2, SQL Server, I'm talking about SQL Server, there is a, something called the uh, utility control. Utility control ma makes it possible to monitor a lot of your database instances across the network in a very efficient way compared to the old way. So really, right now, if you're using a third party tool, in which most DB admin do, this is, this is really a good candidate right now. Utility control can show you dashboards about the health of every server, every instance in your network. Now, what does this have to do with data tier application? Well, it actually can monitor data tier applications. And this is a very good feature. So you can have you know, information about this, your specific application. What is happening for this specific application that I'm running? Okay, if you haven't worked with database project, then probably you would like to know, well, what happens with, with database project? Is it, still, is it still in 2010? Yes. Uh, uh, you, you know, uh, these are two types that work side by side. You choose one, which one you want to work with. Now, the biggest difference between the, I mean, the, uh, this is just, just a simple way of how you build your project. In the database project, once you finish your work, you just generate a SQL script and send it to the DB admin who will deploy it on the server. This is how it works. While in the data tier, you know, you only build to get a DAC pack and the DB admin will just run it on the server. By the way, it doesn't have to be this way. One of the very nice features about this is that you can actually deploy from within Visual Studio. Uh, I, I know that for some of you, you are the developer, 